if if this way is the right way to get enlightenment, um, automatically, naturally, everybody get the enlightenment at the end, right? No, not right. Three mistakes. This is one of the many ways to get enlightenment. Number one. Number two, it's not automatic. Nobody gets enlightenment automatically because then we would reduce ourselves into robots. And we're not. We're human beings. Freedom works both ways. Free will can go any directions. You want to go up, you go up. You want to go straight, you go straight. You want to go down, destroy yourself and others, you can do that too. There is no automatic mechanism to get enlightenment because that mechanism itself would tie and bind us to something which is not awakening and not liberation. Right? You understand that? It's not just logic, it's an experience for everybody who tried certain methods. But uh, as it is, as a human being, it's a perfect, right? Perfect? Who yeah, said that? You, you don't think. <laughs> Who, who, who thinks? I mean, please, um, show forth the person who believes that we, as a species or any individual, that we would be perfect. Okay. I would be very much but enjoying that conversation. Okay. <laughs> Third mistake, there is no end. You say, at the end of the road or the great way, everybody would get enlightenment. But there is no end. You can stop. But that's your choice. But the great way has no beginning, no end. You can start when you decide on practicing. That's fantastic. But this point has no coming, no going, no beginning, no end. So if you delete that from your consciousness, you remove just one more hindrance. Don't think about the end of the great way. Think about your practice moment to moment. Think about your mind, how you keep your mind moment to moment. That's better. So this moment has the past, present and future right here, right now. But that also means that this moment has no past, no present, no future. Okay? Oh no! Just, uh, can I ask? Everybody have this uh, potential to get enlightenment. Everybody have, right? Yes, that's correct. We call that Buddha nature, but Buddha nature is also a little concept. Originally, it doesn't really exist, you know. It's a, like a children's toy for Buddhist kindergarten. Everybody loves Buddha nature. My little Buddha nature, your little Buddha nature, everybody's little Buddha nature, same Buddha nature. Originally, no time, no space. No name, no form. Where is Buddha nature? Okay? It's a concept for the beginners. Very important. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist, but it doesn't exist in the way you think. Okay? So if you want to put any logic into Buddha nature, I'm sorry, you will fail. <laughs> <laughs> so this Buddha potential cannot be developed by themselves automatically? No? Is it a quantity? Buddha nature is a quantity? No. So how could you develop that or make it more? <laughs> Just a natural development. I'm so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> natural development means you remove the hindrances, okay? Yeah. This Buddha nature, like I said, has no time, no space, no appearance, no disappearance. How could you develop that? But what you can do, you remove your karmic hindrances. You remove your attachments. You remove your prefixed ideas. You let go of your illusions. That is developing Buddha nature, but you're not developing Buddha nature. You return to your true self moment to moment. Not follow your karma, return to the moment, return to your true self. That's it. You cannot grow something which doesn't exist. Okay? Good. You can grow things in the garden. It's tasty. That's fantastic. Our beetroot salad and beetroot soup today were just fantabulous. You can grow that. Buddha nature never appears, never disappears. How could you grow that? Okay, good. More questions?
Does enlightenment mean that you know who you are? You don't know who you are? Yeah, exactly. Correct. <laughs> so this don't know becomes bigger, bigger, bigger. Your thinking becomes less, less, less. So you don't break your own mirror. That's very good. Enlightenment is the worst word in Buddhism. People become attached to it. They take it as a candy. They want to buy it in Tesco. Get enlightenment. Number one big mistake. Okay? So, less thinking, then your mind is less cluttered, less divided. No attachments, no problems. So then you can see clearly, hear clearly, taste, smell, touch, think, act, feel, everything clear. Okay? Delete enlightenment. Delete suffering. See things as they are. Okay? And when you can perceive correctly, then you see situation clearly, relationship clearly, and your function also clearly. But if we think in terms of enlightenment and suffering, etc., 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 you will never get out of the little ringle spiel of your own karma. So that's why if you listen to the Heart Sutra very carefully, it's one of the biggest delete routines ever devised to take away any wrong ideas, any wrong views, and clear out even the smallest speck of conceptual thinking and our attachment to it. That's why the end is a mantra and not some great truth verbally. So, when I first started to chant it, I didn't understand a single shred of thought in the Heart Sutra. It was in Hungarian, so I understood the words. No, 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 neither, 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 nor, nor, nor. Okay? But, the ultimate meaning you cannot grasp by your thinking. And that's the good thing about it. Until no realm of mind consciousness, that's the ultimate. Okay? And when that happens, then you know, even the loftiest idea of enlightenment is a yoke. So, as long as necessary, you can think any kind of nice and lofty Buddhist concepts, but ultimately you need to let go of them. So we study, we build up conceptual knowledge, we build up systems, intellectual frameworks, references, whatever you need to remove big wrong views. Then the small wrong views remain of the knowledge itself. And then you transcend that. And that's when you put the little, small, golden cap onto the pyramid. But for that you have to pull together two million tons of stone, limestone. So that's how structure works. That's why the top is empty. That's why the end of the Heart Sutra is Gate, Gate, Para, Gate, Para, Sam, Gate, Bodhisattva. Go, go, go to the other shore, become Buddha. Now what is that supposed to mean? That's for you to find out. That's for us to practice. And it's all right that way. So you, you see, the Heart Sutra takes away all kinds of conceptual attachments, and at the very end, you don't get anything to become attached to, just a direction. Direction. Become Buddha. And the mind works in that way. You say, become, this mind becomes Buddha. And then it happens. You don't know how. You practice long enough, it happens.